Welcome to the Photo Lounge Podcast, the podcast for photographers by photographers all about photography. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 5 of the Photo Lounge Podcast. I am David and joining me as always is Ben Lumley. Hello. There he is. Sorry, there's a delay on the on the thing. You're going to need to come a lot closer to the mic. I'm not, I'm not, it's fine. Don't, be alright. Which one are you? Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right, I'll, I'll sit here. How's that? That's better. Okay, cool. So, this week uh, we are talking about mental health within uh, creativity and kind of more mental health within like freelancing and being self-employed and doing all of this kind of work on your own. Um, Because as we spoke about in the last episode, um, it's quite a big deal within our industry and there's quite a lot of stigma around uh, working for yourself and working from home in this industry. So we just want to kind of talk about some things and kind of speak about our own experiences um, so we can hopefully help other people out. Very true. Very yeah. Good. But we seem to have like glossed over the fact that we are in the same room. Yeah. So, socially distanced with masks on, double vaccinated, COVID tested. Are you but we are in the same room. I'm double vaccinated. Ah. Yeah. I'm old enough, you see. Well, yeah. yeah. I'm of the old, I mean, I'm double vaccinated. I'm, as well, I'm of but... the old generation. <laughs> but yeah, we're actually in the same we room. We are. It, it, we're not on anchor. No, we're not. We're not doing this third party stuff. <laughs> hundred and something miles away from each other. We are in the same vicinity. Yeah. It's just good. wildly exciting. After it is very exciting. Eight, Eighteen months of yeah, hardly seeing each other, and also not just not recording with each other for so long. Like yeah. we haven't. This is the first Been proper busy. thing we've recorded together yeah. for so long. And this is the start of it being more regular. Regular, yes. Hopefully, like, like an old man with a fibrous diet. <laughs> so, yeah, I think what we need to do is I think we need to kick things off with um, a little bit of like maybe. Catch up. Yeah, to, let's cut. Yeah, we need, we need to, to oh, we do up. our catch up thing. Yeah, okay, so what do. have you been doing since the last one, Ben? Fucking everything. Apologise, you have to beep that out. We're you? not beeping. No, F words. We don't beep F words. Um, yeah, like uh, I, everything. So I've now, as of this weekend, wrapped up the Super League netball season. Um, I've shot over two hundred and twenty thousand images. Jesus. I've delivered fifteen thousand images. From 16 weeks worth of games, I've shot 105 games of Super League netball. I've driven three and a half thousand miles. I've stayed in countless hotel rooms. I'm very tired. Um, you, I've, I also heard you took a bit of a shift in your uh, industry. You know, also you, you shoot weddings now, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've gone where the money is. Uh, gone to shoot weddings, no money in sports photography at all. Uh, no, yes, I did shoot your wedding. Um, and it was a, a glorious occasion. It was a banging day. It was a banging day. Um, but yeah, so that's what I've done over the past few weeks. <laughs> you, got ma- on. you got married. You got married. That's why it's kind of been... That's why we've not recorded one for a while. I think the last one we did, you were actually about... To, I think it was like a week or two before yeah. the wedding, from memory. Because midway through the, that recording, my flowers yeah, were yeah, delivered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had to take like 20 minutes off yeah, while yeah. I went and got my flowers and yeah. brought them all upstairs. But Yeah, because you live in this crazy apartment now where you just don't open the front door and you yeah. had to go downstairs. I'd, yeah, it was yeah, a whole part But yes, so last time we recorded, you were about to get married. You're now married. Con- yeah. Congratulations. Thank you, everyone. Welcome I'm to the life... I'm off the market, boys yeah. and girls. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the life sentence that is marriage. Uh, <laughs> you... Um, yeah, like so, you've got married. I've been super busy. You're doing a whole stack of photo shoots now. You're yeah. up in Manchester. Like yeah. your editorial busy. fashion um, photography's just gone bonkers, yeah. which is awesome. It's great um, and lovely to see. Um, yeah, so we're actually getting to sit down because I've got a quiet month. Yeah, intentionally a quiet month. But, I think yeah. that's the same for me as well. Like there was so much um, prep with the wedding and with the move to Manchester and things like that that. Um, we couldn't really get proper time to do this like we've been talking about actually having time to sit down and do this and now that we've both got that time now that like the wedding's over and super league's over and things like that like we've we've got a good period of time here to to kind of sit down and and crack on but yeah and i think the the thing is we were talking about this earlier when we first got like when i first came up here today was the fact that we want to get more regular with it so that we build the habit of doing it as opposed to it just being kind of as and as and when yeah, because that... we, want, we want to be rich and famous like all them other podcasters. <laughs> yeah, there's loads of money in podcasters. Yeah, there is. Like... There's no but... money in creativity at <laughs> no. all. Let's, I mean, let's look at it objectively. <laughs> creativity doesn't earn any money whatsoever. Not at all. But I, might yeah. just be, I might just be a fitness influencer. Oh, that'd be sweet, wouldn't it? Be immense. That'd be sweet. I'd, I'd be like that. One dad... of the people I'm shooting with in a few weeks is like, she's a PT 
Um, and I think she's kind of a- aiming towards that fitness influencer yeah. thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, if she's paying me, then I don't I don't really care. Yeah. There's, there's no money in creativity, me. No, there no, isn't. None at all. So, yes, we are back. It's been very busy. Um, but we have a little bit of time now to hopefully do some more podcasts, which yeah. would be good. But, interestingly, because we're talking about mental health stuff today... Um, mentally at the moment I'm okay I'm not great because I'm just burnt out like I've had yeah. it has been 16 weeks of relentless toil and you'll know from you know conversations we've had away from the online podcasting yeah. sphere that like there's been some days where I've just been exhausted yeah. and I th- sitting here now I feel tired like I feel yeah. rude I could just go and nap all yeah. day if I wanted to like I'm that tired um, and I think that's part of a key part of mental health is you know you are sometimes going to get burnt out because you're going to run around and just do loads and loads of crazy stuff and I think this I think that's quite a good segue um, segue into the uh, into the topic because aren't they the things with wheels that you ride yeah is that also a segue yeah oh, okay sorry yeah, the big the big things yeah yeah with chunky tyres yeah but yeah I think I think that's kind of a good jumping on point because um you spoke last week as or or the week before uh, or episode before whatever about the whole like keeping fit eating eating healthily make sure you have enough sleep yep. while you're in the middle of a season mm-hmm. and then i suppose you get to the end of that season or the end of that you know um very stressful and creative period of back to back shooting mm-hmm. and you kind of you then hit that tired burnout stage yeah. but you you you're managing it the whole way through and i suppose when you look at um, you know the work that you do like when like in 2019 when you were traveling a lot as well mm-hmm. it was it was very similar I remember at Christmas you yeah. you saying the same thing to me like yeah you were just glad that you had a break. three or four weeks off where you just weren't traveling and yeah. you know you could just stay at home with the family and yeah. chill and get your feet up and yeah, just yeah. Netflix and that's and, it and that that stuff does make a, a, a big difference being able to look at work and life from a periodical point so I was listening to a podcast the other week um, by Rich Roll uh, Rich Roll's a ultra man Iron Man distance triathlon like insane but his, his podcast is ace um, and he they were talking about the concept of like periodization in training is where you go through periods of like very hard progressive training where you're pushing and then you back off for a few weeks um, and they were talking about like from a, a big training point of view like extrapolating that out and like you've got six months which is like on and off on and off really really hard and then you back it out for six months where you take it easy you let your body recover and everything but then they were saying that that also applies to life mm. like to yeah. rather than trying to have a constant work life balance where every day is a 50-50% balance of work and life yeah. is actually very very difficult and actually not particularly good for you because there are going to be times when you will be flat out yeah. but then there's going to be six months where you might not be flat out yeah. and then that's when you can then take some more time for you and do your thing and yeah. actually think, thinking of that life from a point of view of like seasons yeah. you know, seasonally and periodically is actually a really good way to be so for, for the last few weeks while I've been feeling like I'm running on empty but knowing that I've got to finish the season off mm. and I know I've got busy months coming up I've known that come end of June beginning of July mm. like that was my end point like I yeah. would have a month yeah. and even though I've got work on and I'm, I wouldn't say I'm not busy but I've got enough to tick me over and be quite happy um, there's, it's just nice to be able to just sit and chill and you know read a book and you know everything else and not have to worry about the fact that I'm just tired and empty yeah. yeah and I feel really but tired I also think that that, that that kind of way of looking at things as well in terms of an energy level throughout the year like you, you're thinking about it over a 12 month period mm. that applies to so many more areas of of freelancing because you look at um like financially i know that both of us january december and january yeah, yeah. financially uh, they're potentially our two worst months like yeah. we, we earn next to nothing periodically in, the, in them yeah. two months yeah. but you spread you spread your earnings throughout the year over them 12 months yeah. you know that and it evens out like you know that if you're getting paid a seven thousand pound um, invoice in July. Mm. That okay, that's great, but that's got to last you yeah, through yeah. to Christmas. Yeah, and yeah. like you, you spread that out, and um, and, and knowing and, that those periods of, of busy and quiet are coming are yeah. quite important, and that actually helps your mental health because yeah. it allows you to be a bit more 
uh, clear on what's happening mm. rather than just being in a constant full-on panic mode like you it's a lot easier to handle when you know you've got a break coming yeah. up because yeah. you've looked at it and you've put a break in or you know you're aware that the thing that you're doing is going to come to an end and you'll get some time and that it helps understanding what's going to happen massively helps yeah you top, I and, and and i think like like preempting all of that like really looking at your schedule and, and allocating that time off is very crucial mm. uh, every every single yeah, year yeah. and early days and i know you definitely did it i 100 percent did it early days of freelancing you kind of get to these periods where you're super busy and you're like yeah i'm, I'm really busy and you think this is how it should be all the <laughs> yeah. time and then you hit your first burnout and you're yeah, like yeah, yeah. damn I can't, like i can't do this like this is not sustainable yeah. and i think that's where a lot of freelancers or a lot of yeah. people graduate in university and things like that i think that's where they all fall yeah. is that first major burnout because yeah. like you're not gonna if you're getting into freelance now or you're thinking of going into it or you're you're in your first year let me tell you now you are going to burn out every year at some point yeah, and it's coming. gonna be big and it's gonna hit your mental health it's yeah. gonna hit your physical health and you're going to be tired yeah and this is just a fact of life this isn't just a freelancing thing like i see it with my partner she's a nurse and that happens yeah all the time with her and it's just you just need the time where you can say right yeah. i'm hitting the reset button and knowing like you you've got work on this month but no mm -hmm. you just know that you can casually do this work yep. it's easy enough yep. work that it's not going to stress you out straightforward you can get your feet up and you can just yep. netflix and I've, just 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 relax for the first time in six to eight weeks this week i've gone for a run which i haven't done for ages I've sat and read a book which i haven't done for ages um i've napped during the day which i haven't done for ages mm -hmm. like I've just been able to take the time. Yeah. Um, but understanding that, you know, those periods come and understanding that actually what you're doing as a creative is cyclical. So mm. it is going to go in a cycle. Like I remember the first big crash I had, like emotional crash. Mm. Um, I'd done two big triathlons, two big World Series triathlon races before I was employed by World Triathlon. And I had this massive like emotional high on the Sunday. I'm going to Saturday or Sunday. It might be Sunday. Um, a, a World Series race in Leeds. Um, and my photos had been used by like the winner of the women's race. And like my social media was like popping all over everywhere. And it was brilliant. And I was on this massive high all weekend because I was in, in the environment that I knew I belonged. Mm. Um, and then I got home. And like on the Monday, I'm hanging washing out on the line. And I'm like... Tuesdays. I'm like, what, <laughs> what the fuck's going on? Like... And I didn't understand at the time that it was cyclical, that yeah. I'm going to have these massive moments yeah. and then it's going to drop. So I've I've known for weeks that come the end of the netball season, like that this week that we're in right now yeah. was always going to be hard. Yeah. And actually, touch wood, it's not been as hard as I thought it might be. Like I thought yeah. emotionally I'd be a lot worse off. Yeah. But just knowing that it was coming knew enabled me to kind of navigate it a bit yeah. better like i've yeah. put things in place to allow me to just to navigate it better like i haven't filled my calendar with loads of stuff to keep me busy like i've not set high expectations on yeah. myself i've taken lots of time to do the things that i know make me feel better mm. um you know and that stuff all helps and I, I i i always think of this um whenever i'm thinking of like this subject i always look at sportsmen and you look at um, all women all women but I look sports at sports people. Sports people. I mean, I'm sports specifically beings. looking at Formula One drivers, and there isn't a Formula One woman driver. So yet, yet, yeah. Well, the W Series actually just did really well last last week. But anyway, uh, I look at these guys, and after the after the all winter girls. break, <laughs> I look <laughs> after the winter break. You, you, they interview all the drivers, and the, yeah. the the media are always saying, "Oh, what did you do over the winter break? Like, did you do anything?" And like, you know, you have the odd people. Like, I know Lewis Hamilton. He likes to go out to yeah. LA and he'll have a few weeks or a month to himself and then you'll see him like you know with his friends or doing like he's got a lot of things that he does um charities he works with and things like that and so he'll fill his calendar with that but then you look at other drivers like sebastian vettel and oh they, he just disappears off the just, planet yeah like yeah. you just don't know you just yeah, don't see yeah, him during yeah. the winter yeah, and yeah. it's it's very much he just wants to be with his family yeah. and and with his bikes and, and he needs to recharge yeah and and it's yeah and i think you know everyone's going to deal with that like we could tell you some stuff today and you could think that's rubbish that's not for me or you could, or it could be the opposite and it could change your life but everyone is going to be different and finding finding for you what works like i know that ben nothing relaxes ben quite like a, a nice long run like yeah, he loves going run. on a run yeah long when, run. when i'm when i'm fit enough 
mm. going on a on a decent sized 10 15 mile run really yeah. se- really sells me whereas for me when i'm like my ultimate relaxing state is being sat in a bar with a cracking pint of beer in in my hand like you know like going out and exploring that kind of world is is my form of relaxation and everyone does it differently yeah, and, and it helps it helps in, it helps each each person in a different way the key is to is to realize what those things are mm. for you and mm. it is individual because there's there's quite a lot of negativity i see it as negativity it is sold as positivity and um, inspirational but there's a lot of um entrepreneurs and businessmen and things like that in America that say, well, you've got to wake up at 4 a.m. Yeah, every day. Yeah. Hustle you've, pawns you've immense. You've got to drink yeah, yeah. Um, seven litres of water a day. If you're not doing this, if you're not, if you don't look in the mirror and scream positivity, then you're a failure. Yeah. And like at the end of the day, it's all bullshit because you like you wake up some... I'll tell you now, I woke up this morning and I was like, I had a bad night's sleep last night and I just was not feeling... Ben coming up today and recording this and just hanging out with him and and then my mindset sh- soon changed because I I knew I knew the pattern of how awesome I was. Well, yeah, <laughs> but I knew the pattern of thinking I was, I was my brain was leading me to. So I just did things like going out and walking my dog and um, you know sitting and just chilling on my balcony and having a coffee in yeah. the morning. Like I did little things like that that just reset my brain and just kind of put me in a, a bit more of a positive mood yeah. and then the moment we met up it was it, it, was, great. it was instantly yeah, like yeah. better and that's that's a key thing as well that's a, an important takeaway is knowing the things that you can do to break the pattern mm. yeah. like i know if i don't want to go for a run but i know it's going to do me a hell of a lot of good i know if i can just get out the door and do a mile mm. that's usually fine like i've, yeah. I've broken the pattern yeah. then i'm okay yeah. but look if i if i resist it too much and mm. I don't go out and I don't get out the door then then I, I've lost that little battle but yeah like hustle the hustle culture <laughs> it, it's difficult like I don't think it's all bullshit I really don't I do think people oh, yeah. I do think people need to put an awful lot more work in than they think they should do but I'm saying that in the early days there's a very there's a very niche like you look at Gary V and what he used to say yeah, and what yeah. he's saying now like he he's he, he's he's giving more of a message of like you know, maximize your day. Yeah. But then there was that like Navy SEAL or something a few years back who released that book, and then all of a sudden everyone I even yeah. tried it for a bit was waking up at four yeah, thirty in the um, morning and like Yako. Oh, what's his name? I can't remember. Can't remember. Can't remember. But he's he is very cool. But yeah, but that like that works for him. Yeah. And I get up at six every day. Yeah. So and that I. works for me. Yeah. But it's about finding what works for you. But this the whole concept of like you know working super hard and hustle and all that kind of stuff is. And Gary Vee's a great example. Like when he was building his businesses up, Mm. you know, Wine Library, the wine shop, and his social media stuff, and, you know, VaynerMedia, and all those things back in the day, for anyone who's aware of what he did, he did hustle a lot and he was putting long hours in. But what you'll notice now, if you pay attention, is that he does spend more time away with his family. He does take breaks. He does shut off. He Mm. doesn't reply to every tweet anymore because he's put in enough of the work that he's hit that tipping point where everything's has got momentum enough on his own yeah. that he hasn't got to like push it every single day and he's also got the right team of people yeah, yeah. and I know that that's, and, and you that's can't a success get to that. and money yeah, thing yeah. But... and you can't get to that point unless you've put the graph yeah in. exactly yeah. but that's the point there's, it's also a key thing to understand that yes you can hustle and hustle and hustle but eventually like you say you're going to go through your first burnout yeah. and everybody does everybody regardless of how passionate or how much you love what you do like you're going to hit that yeah. burnout point and it's going to be shit and it hurts and it's horrible yeah and you know nobody understands it either like that's a really yeah, hard one yeah. like the people who aren't in a creative space don't understand what that yeah. burnout's like or it's, why you're having it i would say that this is the most this is the biggest thing that me and my partner speak about is this burnout and this kind of um relentlessness mentally yeah because i know she, i've got you know, loads of friends who don't get it everyone has stressful jobs like everyone's got stress yeah, in their yeah. job you work in a shop you've got stress yeah, if you're yeah. a brain surgeon you've got stress it's just yeah. different types of stress but the creativity stress is very difficult to fathom for people that aren't in this world because my girlfriend is far from creative she's not my wife she's not my girlfriend she's my wife yeah, my got, wife got that, mate. <laughs> my wife is not a creative person like she does not have a creative bone in her body so for her to grasp this concept, just she just it, she struggles yeah. with it. And what a lot of people don't get with creativity as well is that, like mentally, you're always on. Mm. Like you're yeah, like, yeah. The, the mental energy aspect of being a creative, a, a working creative, yeah, is like there's a lot of mental energy that gets expended. And, and this is this is so 
prominent now for me because during my wedding, I had Ben shooting my photos and a good friend of mine, George, who was doing my video. And just throughout the entire day, even during the ceremony, I wasn't looking at the corner of my eye at my dad or my mom or best men or whatever. I was looking at the corner of my eye like, oh, where's like where's Ben shooting from? And like, I remember right before. I wonder what photos they're gonna get. I wonder yeah. what that video clips gonna get like. But I, I remember I right before, that. like we did the first kiss. I turned and looked at you, and I right. saw where you were, and always I was like, oh, he's right. gonna get that sweet shot right yeah, through the crowd, yeah, yeah. and always and like. Th- this is that meant like I don't this shoot is... weddings. Nobody yeah. email me. Do not about contact Ben because you will you won't get a polite reply. But like this is the thing like you never switch off. I'm stood there getting married. Yeah, like we and, and all I was thinking about was wow that that's going to be a good shot. We've from gone ben. for a walk this morning to get a coffee when I first arrived, and I've mm. walked around Manchester thinking that's quite a nice location. Yeah, like the light through that yeah street there is quite nice. Yeah, and like you never quite switch off. So even though I'm having a quote unquote week off, I haven't had a week off because I've shot. A gig on Monday night. Uh, I did a photo shoot yesterday, and I'm here today. So it's not a week off, but yeah. like even on those less busy weeks, like I'm still thinking. Yeah. Like actually, I'm thinking, and because like this next, where are we now? July. Yeah, so this next week. 13, 14 month cycle for me is really, really important. Yeah. Because at the end of it, next summer is the Commonwealth Games. Yeah. So like I finished netball mm. on Sunday. I drove home Sunday evening yeah. and my brain was already thinking, right, when do I need to start making moves on Commonwealth yeah. Games? Because netball's going to be in the Commonwealth Games. Yeah. Triathlon's going to be in the Commonwealth Games. When do I need to start making the moves? Yeah. And when do I need to start talking to people and getting it all confirmed in, in place? Yeah. Like, there's a really good chance. It's, where is the Commonwealth Games this year? Birmingham. Next year. Birmingham. Okay. Birmingham. So, a, a great I apologize location. to anyone who's offend, <laughs> offended by my horrible Birmingham accent. Um, but yeah, like, it's, yeah, it's Birmingham. So, like, it's dead easy for me to get to. Yeah. Like, I haven't got to go to the federations that I work for and say right well you know you need to consider flying me across the globe because I haven't got to do that because I'm literally in the on right the place set. at the right place yep. at the right time yep. but like I'm already thinking like so all the dates are in my calendar I've already done that this week yep. I'm already thinking about like I've already spoken to a client and said like I'm up for this like it's in our backyard like we've got a really good chance of doing this correctly like and I think that's and key as well that conversa- and like this is meant to be my week off yeah like I'm meant yeah. to have stopped but like my brain won't stop yeah your brain won't stop I just won't be picking a camera up as much yeah. and I'm able to do that if I was trying to do that whilst working five six days a week yeah like mentally that's just yeah. not and but understanding that you can go through periods where it's super busy physically yeah. and then it won't be super physically physically and then you can use your brain in a slightly different way mm, yeah. like that's really important and i know you mentioned it but earlier if, on as but, well about like stigma i think stigma is yeah, really really important yeah. because i think there is a shift in the society at the minute where we are saying like it's okay to like have a problem there's yeah. a whole like thing of like there's a very big men do cry yeah and i sat when the super league grand final finished and all the streamers and pyrotechnics went off and all the photos were done. I actually sat on court under one of the posts and like I felt myself well enough because mm. all of that emotion that I built up for six weeks was mm. draining out of me. All the en- adrenaline that I'd been running on for six yeah. weeks, 16 weeks was draining out of me. Yeah. And like, it's okay to do that. Yeah. And it's okay to like let that out. And if you want to do that publicly, you want to do that privately or whatever, like, it actually doesn't matter. Yeah. But understanding that it's it's okay to like feel all this stuff. And yeah. it's better to have a self-awareness of where you are and how you feel yeah. than it is to kind of fight against it and assume that you've got to be in a you know a certain way and behave in a certain way and think in a certain way and like that that's okay that, it's okay to be yeah. like emotional about stuff but I think you you said something there that was that I think a lot of people are gonna uh, maybe not be so surprised after our Tuesday podcast um, but okay, you that ju- came out on a Friday that came out on a Friday but like the whole concept of that Tuesday, like you just yeah. said that, you know, this is your week off, but yet you're, you're thinking about Commonwealth Games, you're talking about that. But that's not creative. Like you're doing nothing creative there. So the, the what you're doing is you are switching your brain off. You're switching yeah. your brain off from that creativity, yeah, yeah. but you're planning ahead. Like you're still in that business mode of where am I going to be in 14 months? Tyler? Like, what am I going to be doing in 14 months? So you are thinking very sensibly about the mental health yeah. your mental health at the moment but I know and, like you're, coming and you're off, doing that in, yeah, yeah. A, in a relaxed way that Absolutely. isn't fully pulling you yeah. out because you're not sitting back and just ignoring the world no. you're still staying engaged with it you're just doing it in a way where you can still relax yeah. in that way and, and planning ahead like that will yeah. is much better for my mental health like yeah. having that play I know if I'm trying to chase 
com games bookings two weeks out from the competition like that's just going to stress me out but yeah. i know if i've already started to put it in place and i've got the wheels turning there's less pressure on it yeah in exactly. the last few months but i know come the end of commonwealth games there's going to be a 10 day run of pretty much me working flat out non-stop at yeah. probably the highest level i've ever worked at and yeah. probably aside from the olympic games will probably be the highest level the I biggest will work stage at. yeah um i know come August when that's over, like I'm gonna need to have a break. That yeah. we'll need to have a break yeah, in that calendar definitely. because I can't bounce straight out of that into something else. Yeah, because the the I physical. Prob- I probably will. Like I probably <laughs> will put a whole lunch because that'll be knowing uh, knowing triathlon. There'll be some. There'll be a world. There'll be world some series. kind of World Series final yeah. around August September time, which means I'll bounce out of the game straight into that. But but, th- but then you know that you know that uh, that Christmas you'll have a yeah. you'll have a very big yeah, break and and, um, and you'll switch off a bit yeah, more. And absolutely. I think Christmas is always a great point because almost the entire world switches off for at least a week yeah. at Christmas. Yeah, yeah. That week, that, and, that block between Christmas 22nd, 23rd, through till about the 4th of yeah. January for me is yeah. usually quite quiet. It, that Which is, is great. That for me, every year, so we will either go to uh, my partner's parents or my parents or we'll just stay at our place and just kind of like switch off. But Just allows you to decompress. We just, we barely even, like not barely even talk, but like whenever we talk, it's just, you know, how you doing? Like yeah, you yeah. had a good Christmas, you had yeah, fun. Yeah. And, I try and stay away from my phone and social media and stuff like that because the moment I pick my phone up in that, in that time of year, I'm, I'm always just thinking of work and things like that. And, yeah. and it, you've got to really, you've got to really sit back at that point of the year and just yeah. say, you know what? No one's in the office working. No one, like my clients aren't going to be looking at their emails right now. Let's just sit, sit back yeah. and relax. And I know that sometimes it does happen. You've you had messages. Oh, the I've Boxing had messages. On, I've or... had messages on Christmas Eve before. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It was I, last year. Wasn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah. a couple of years yeah. ago. Yeah, I had Christmas Eve, which is fine. Like it's fine. Um, but yeah, generally I'll stay away from stuff if I can. It, the the social media thing is an interesting one. Um, like I think we get so drawn into likes and well, shares and comments and engagement and numbers that yeah. it becomes. A massive misery business like you can you can get so miserable about it all and I'll, actually it doesn't matter yeah um so i've got to the point now where i've turned off my notifications for both instagram and twitter mm. um and the only notification i get is for direct message so if mm. someone's direct message me about yeah, yeah. you know photos or something particular then i'll, I'll get that but Aside from likes and comments and tags and stuff, I don't get unless I go on the apps. So uh, th- I think this is a great thing to talk about. Instagram launched and they announced it a few years ago um, that you could you would be able to have the option to hide your likes from people that see your stuff and from yourself. Has that now come a thing? I, I had the notification about a month ago. I've enabled it two weeks ago right, okay. because I've been uploading photos and Instagram changed their algorithm so much that you'll have dips in your photos or you'll have really mm. real highs and at the moment i'm in a pretty big dip so anytime i post i'm not getting what i, I got six months ago yeah, yeah so i i enabled this option and to to not show likes so i don't see likes on my photos where is it in notifications on settings so you go to your profile settings yeah. and then privacy so come out of there privacy and then you click on posts and it's at the very top uh, hide likes gone. and I did this two weeks. Fixed my mental health. Then. I did this two weeks ago, and you still you can still see likes. Yeah, like yeah. I can go on my post and see how many likes I've got, but then if you go on my post, or yeah. if even if I'm just on the main screen, I can only see. So if I'm I'm looking yeah, now, yeah. I'm I'm on a, a, a Formula One um, post is on the, the top of my Instagram, yeah, yeah. and it just says liked by blah yeah. blah blah and others. It yeah. doesn't say and, and six thousand yeah, others. Yeah. It yeah. just says and others. Oh, that's so brilliant. you can't no. see that number anymore. Yeah. I knew they were trying it. And the switch for me in the last two weeks of doing this has been astonishing because I uploaded a photo and it has been getting steady likes mm-hmm. but I could not tell you how many likes it's got now because even on your notifications when it would say like Ben Lumley just liked your photo and 72 others it doesn't even show that anymore. So I don't know how many people have liked my photo unless I specifically go to that photo to look at it but I don't want to do that because I'm not I'm not bothered about about that side of it and um and I think if you are in the creative space and you are worried about a big dip in likes then just just go into that like I just said you go to your account settings privacy and it's at the very top of that 
if you if you can't see it, just update the app and or it'll be there. Worst case scenario, take the thing off your phone. Or just, like, or disable your notifications. Yeah, just something else that Instagram have done is they introduced the the primary and the general inbox. Yeah, yeah. Now what I do, genius. What I do with I everything is anyone I talk to who is a friend or anything. So Ben, my wife you know, friends from the wedding, whatever, they're all in my primary inbox because yeah. them people I want to get a notification yeah, yeah. from. Like if you message me, I want to know yeah, when yeah, you've yeah. messaged me yeah, yeah. because it's not always going to be about work. It's most likely just going to be a, a reply, funny meme. Uh, yeah, or, or a, reply, <laughs> a reply to something that you post on your story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like they're, they're, they're the things I want to see. Yeah, yeah. But then if a model messages me or someone I want to work with, that drops into my general inbox. Yeah. I don't get a notification yeah. from my general inbox, yeah, which means that. that if I... I woke up the other day and I had I had six messages from a model, but I didn't get a notification about it because at 6 a.m. when I'm sat eating my Weetabix, I don't want to see that yeah. and message them back. Yeah. So Instagram and, and other social media platforms are introducing tools to be able to help your mental health. The I think the problem is they're not being seen as things that can help your mental health. No. Like small things like hiding likes and removing notifications that is going to save your evenings. Yeah. So I work with a I work with um a company that that is it's a car dealership and the the owner of the business constantly says to me like I'm getting annoyed at, at having texts and emails come through at, at eight o'clock at night when I'm just trying to yeah, you know off. just sit with my kids and watch a film or something. It's ten to, ten and it's to, it's to the point where he just went out last week on my recommendation and bought another iPhone mm. that now lives at the office and that's the yeah. that's the work phone because the moment he leaves that office. That's it. Yeah. He 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 needs to zone out out yeah. of that. Otherwise, he's not go, he's going to crash, and he's not going to have that family time he wants. And do you know one thing I have? Uh, well, I've got set up on my phone, so my phone's always on silent. Mm. Yeah, always. Too, yeah. Um, and I use the do not disturb function. Yeah. Auto. Yeah. Yeah. Because like I don't want to be disturbed. Yeah. And mine is if nine I want, at night. If I through to no no mine's, mine's off all the time. No, so mine's, mine's on. on do not disturb all the time, no, and I have just... key people saved onto like my phone contacts yeah. who can who basically can break through that yeah yeah um but no clients are on that yeah um you know no work related Am I on, on that? that yeah you're on that good um but like i don't i want to make the choice to pick my phone up and yeah. check it yeah. i don't want to be bombarded all the yeah. time yeah um because like i want to be in control of it and that from from a mental health point of view like m social media and phone notifications and, and all that stuff like can be really really difficult to navigate yeah so having having things in place that help you know removing notifications or you know all of that kind of stuff or even screen time like yeah uh, put, yeah, your, yeah. put your screen time on and only allow yourself an hour per app or something there's, there's that like, you become very mindful and yeah. when you're mindful about things like yeah. you're in a much better place mentally there is there's built-in devices i know definitely on android i'm sure iphone will have it as well where you can i used to have it um uh, during the, the during this last lockdown we've just had, so mm. January through to March, um, because technically we're still in that lockdown. Yeah, but you, you know we're not. We're not. Yeah. <laughs> like, come on. No, no one cares anymore. I, I, I mean, I'm going to a bar tonight and I'm going to get absolutely fucking hammered. So I, I, we're not in a lockdown. Uh, but but during that lockdown, I knew that I wasn't going to get much from um, uh, clients or just yeah. sitting on Instagram and things like that. So I so I limited myself to six hours of phone time a day, which yeah. for me is probably half, maybe more yeah, yeah. than half of what I usually do screen time wise. Yeah. So I would get to six hours and then my phone would disable itself and I would have to type in a different passcode than my regular passcode yeah. to then be able to access my phone as a, like, as a security thing. Yeah. But that six hours a day meant that I would get halfway through the day and I'd look at my phone and be like, oh, I've only got two hours left on that six hours. So then I would know that, okay, I can either sit and binge reels a bit more or watch YouTube or whatever, or just, you know, go on Instagram or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like I can do that for another two hours, but then that's it. And it's 6 PM and I can't, I can't use my phone for the rest of the day. Mm. And that in this, in the last lockdown stopped me from just staring at Instagram yeah. forever. Doom and, and, scrolling and is the doom term. Doom scrolling. Yeah. Doom like, scrolling. like, but I don't getting think in my own head yeah, about yeah. shit I can't control. Yeah, yeah, and I, I don't necessarily think like doom scrolling is just about looking at miserable news, 
But oh no, it, Doom for, scrolling can for me. And yeah. it'll be, I bet it's the same for you. Is where you're scrolling through other people's work, yeah, that's it. and you're like, why are they getting work and I'm yeah. not? And you know, why are they doing this and I'm not? Why have they got more likes than me? And, mm. and that, like, that isn't good. No. That's not. It's yeah. never good for anybody. No. That's where when you find yourself doing that, that's when you need to put the brakes on and go right. I need to do something now which breaks this cycle yeah. because this cycle doesn't help me. Yeah. Because I'm looking at something for, through my lens and actually the, the reality is probably very very different yeah, yeah. like you can see people out shooting and you know doing creative work and you think wow they must be really busy but they may well be dragging it up from an archive mm -hmm. that they've shot before they may be doing stuff for free you know they may be under a whole world of pressure to get stuff done mm. and actually you're in a much better place than they are yeah. and, and to to tumble down that rabbit hole is, is quite detrimental, I yeah. find, to mental health. So, like, definitely, once you've let go of what everybody else is doing and just focus on you, like, you can get an awful lot, yeah, better mentally. Um, it's 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 a real challenge. Like, being creative, it's a real challenge, and I, I hate talking about it because it's so it's so dark. But when Chester Bennington uh, committed suicide three years ago, four years ago, whatever it was, um, the lead singer from Linkin Park. My first reaction after, holy shit, that's awful. Yeah. Because, you know, Adam, my best mate, oh, my, my, yeah, yeah. my other best mate, <laughs> uh, he, he, was on, he he just finished that tour. Yeah. Like, he just yeah. finished working he was that on tour. that tour, yeah. yeah. Um, and he then went home. The band then went home. And he was very close with him. Like, yeah, he yeah. was very close with the yeah, band. Yeah, like, yeah. They, like, they used to hang out all yeah, the time. Yeah. And... They hang out backstage and stuff. And he... When it happened and I found out, my first reaction was, holy shit, that's awful. My next reaction was, I get it. Mm, like, yeah, I, I, I totally yeah, get it. Yeah. To, like, he, yeah. as a guy, he wasn't the most mentally stable and, in in, you know, he was yeah. quite emotive. Like, he, wore, he he found situations quite difficult. Yeah. But I know what that's like mm. to go and put your heart and soul into something for ages. Mm. And then when you come out of it and go back into reality, I know what that, drain of energy feels mm, like yeah. now i have never got to the point where i'm like shit i want to end i want to end stuff yeah but i totally get how he I got can there. see how yeah 100 percent how he got here yeah. got what he got there and mm. i spoke to lots of people and lots of people oh it's fucking awful and like you know he's at the top of his game and he shouldn't yeah why, like, why but the question always is when like uh, like with um uh amy 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 winehouse yeah amy yeah, winehouse, yeah, like, yeah. I know she didn't specifically kill herself but yeah. you know like she knew what she was doing yeah, yeah, like, yeah. but it's it's more the, uh, the public the general public usually would say you know why would they do that yeah, they top of their the career of the game, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, but it's I, I get it like yeah. I I see the same thing whenever I always say the same thing whenever anyone commits suicide and you hear about it it's like you don't know what they were thinking and what they were going through but also like if if you felt any creative pressure or stress that a lead singer of a major but like imagine putting an album out and and some of your your most loyal fans hate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what? Yeah, it's crazy. Like, it must be a kick in the balls. Yeah, and yet people are so easy. Like, I remember when Arctic Monkeys launched their um, last album that they did, it got a, it, it was split. It split their yeah. fan base in half, and it was half hated it, half loved it. Yet, they would they did it because they loved yeah. doing that. They loved the music yeah. they were making at that point. And I could easily see how you can go from, like, from being a, a complete high in your career and in yeah. your life to then all of a sudden you're just like you're thinking things like that because it is just the the, the path up is so difficult yeah. and tough yeah, yeah. and the and path down is the smoothest fastest slope yeah. in the world and I, I get how and I'm not advocating at all and I definitely don't do it but like I get why some some celebrities and creatives, you know, artists and musicians, all this, but like, I understand why they end up on in drink and mm, drug yeah, rehabs yeah. Oh, because definitely. it isn't because they're weak people. It's no. because as, as creatives, you get so invested into the, the art that you're making, regardless of what that art is, mm. that when it then goes away, because either your career comes to an end or you're just on hiatus between yeah. a tour, mm. um, you know, or you've done an album or whatever, like, when that rush of adrenaline leaves you, mm. like it leaves you really, can leave you really, really oh, low. Yeah. And if you're, you know, emotionally not quite strong enough at that point, then that's really hard to manage. Like yeah. really, really hard to manage. I think, and I, I totally get it. And I think this is across all spectrums as well, because like we're talking about music quite specifically here. Yeah. I think it's highlighted quite a lot in music because the industry is so, 
it's quite saturated and it's quite it's a, publicized. A, 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 yeah, it's yeah. a very tough yeah, industry. Yeah. If, if they were musician... some of musicians are some of the first real yeah, celebrities. Yeah. Yeah. In, yeah. If, in the if world. music, if a musician commits suicide, then you know about Everyone it. It's on the news. Yeah. Whereas but, that doesn't happen. But when you look at like, let's just let's just delve a little deeper. Everyone that's listening to this podcast has watched Friends at some point in their life. The Friends reunion the other oh, week. Oh, so sad. There was something mentioned in it that from from um, oh, I forget Matt his name. Perry. Matt Perry, uh, who played Chandler, and he said, "You know what I'm already about to say." Yeah. He sat on the sofa and he said he had regular panic attacks where right before he would go on onto the set, you've got to remember they had a live audience. Yeah, yeah. So right before they went onto a set, he would very consciously think, "What if I'm not funny tonight? What if this joke doesn't land?" Mm-hmm. And he used to stress so much about a joke not landing or the audience that night not liking what he was giving but you, out but you watch him yeah it, he makes it look so effortless he makes but it look like so in the back of his head. his head yeah, yeah yeah and and like you can look from season season i think it's season four to season five or season five to season six it actually might be season i can't remember but there's there's a it's season a period. there's a period in the middle where the, the story continues but it's last episode to first episode so in reality it was you know eight months a year yeah. and because the story continues seamlessly Matthew Perry went through rehab mm. because he was abusing drugs and drink yeah, yeah. during that time he's very overweight and well, he comes back at the beginning of one season he's really lost weight and then yeah. the next one he's really gained the yeah. weight and it's and you can just see him in himself that even though the comedy hasn't changed, even though his performance hasn't changed, it's still Matthew Perry performing at the top of his game. Yeah, yeah. Mentally, he was dealing with some serious yeah, yeah, yeah. shit yeah, yeah. that like that that led him to think. Well, it, no, it led him to to use drug and al- drugs and alcohol to just be able to to navigate to, it. Yeah, yeah, to but dull you, the feeling. But you look at Robin Williams. Yeah, greatest comedian it's in the world same. ever seen. Mm. A, a beautiful, beautiful mind, but you know, mentally struggled, like a lot of us do, mm. and led himself to a point where he didn't see a way out. And it's terribly sad. Yeah. It really, really is. But I can see how he got there. Like, as a creative now, yeah. as a working yeah. creative now, I, I can see why he got yeah. there. Because there's still times now where I'll I'll shoot photo for something mm. and you just don't know whether it's landed right. You just yeah. don't know yeah. whether like but, that... But that even, client... when, even when you're shooting, you, yeah, yeah. I look at the back of my camera yesterday and there were times where I'm taking photo during the shoot and I'm like... This just doesn't look good, and I'm like, "What am I doing?" Yeah, yeah. And it was a simple case of just, just like turning around and just looking at it. But a different like, way. okay, so I'll I'll be open and honest. So I have just finished Super League Netball, 105 games. Um, I'm not 100 percent sure whether I've nailed that this mm. season or not. Yeah, and lots of people have. I've had some lovely comments from coaches and players and fans and people involved in the and sport David and David and people involved in the sport, and it, it's been lovely. But I don't know quite yet, and I think it's because it's still quite early Fresh. in the in the down period for mm. me like I don't quite know if I've nailed it like I, yeah. I wanted to leave a, a legacy of photo from a very what was going to be a very special season if, with an opportunity that we probably not get to have again mm. like it was going to be very very unique I don't know whether I've quite done that well and and, and that that's just the creative yeah and I know what like I, I could I could say anything right now to try and yeah, yeah. like help you through this yeah, yeah. and try and convince you but the, at the end of the day no matter what I say, yeah. you're still going to be thinking this yeah. in the drive home until it settles. But the only thing I can say to anyone that's listening and hasn't seen Ben's work throughout the season, it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I can say is that Sky Sports have featured a lot of your stuff, yeah. and they want to do yeah, a photography to. journey like feature, yeah, yeah. like a feature about your photos yeah, and about is. this season. Yeah. Because, like you say, it is a one-off season. Like, we we Very we'll never have a season no. like this again. No, no, no. And and I think that speaks volumes yeah, for the work. It does. Done. Yeah, yeah. But but there's always that doubt of course and then yeah. and I think that's a creative thing like you always quite, you know, have a quite made the mark mm. or you know as we've said yesterday, we said earlier on today when we were looking at some of your photos like yeah. you, you do it and you're like yeah they're great and then a couple of weeks later you're like I can do better yeah. and there's, yeah. there's always that there's element. always improvement and f- from a mental health point of view you need to be a- aware of that and yeah. yes like listen to yourself and listen to others and all that kind of stuff but just understand that it's part of the game yeah. because once you understand it's part of the game it hits you less hard mm. there's less element of like doing something and then going I don't I think, I think that was shit and if you're not appreciative that that's going to happen that moment of oh well, that was shit like massively hits you back yeah. whereas if like 
you go, oh, that was shit, but you know in a couple of days' time you'll feel better or the next shoot or is going to be better or whatever, like, it's easier to navigate through that as, yeah. a, as yeah. a creative. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, mentally that becomes a lot easier. And it's just, it's understand, like, once you've got a, an understanding of how it all works, mm. and I don't mean necessarily the business, but just the, you know, it's things like we've talked about, like, it being in a cycle and knowing that some months you're going to have be busy and some months you won't be busy and and knowing that some clients are going to love it and some clients and once you understand all of those things yeah then it's a lot easier to to navigate those yeah. more difficult emotional times because yeah. you know it's it's all part of the process mm. like it's all part yeah. of you getting yeah. to where you're going to get and rather than going oh yeah. well this is the fucking end like, yeah it's all over and I'm, yeah I'm never, no one's ever gonna hire me again well no that's not the case you <laughs> just don't think the photos from that session are particularly yeah. great and they well, are but we've had we've had conversations this season with you where you've sent me photos and i'm like i'm like they're really good or yeah. i've i've even said to you sometimes this season like this isn't your best work yeah yeah, yeah. you got to the copper box oh. and, and like that, that first Bloody weekend in the you. copper box I was like, Ben, this is some of your best stuff. And you were like, no. Oh. And then I said, but look at this compared to this. Yeah, yeah. And I sent you two photos of yeah, like, yeah. this was from the Copper Box this week. This was from, uh, you know, Wakefield Arena or whatever it is last week. And it, and you, when you when you then look at them side by side, you're like, actually, yeah, okay. Yeah. I can see why you're saying that. Yeah. And it, it, But then you compare the first week in the Copper Box yes. eight weeks ago. Yeah. So the last week. To the last week. And it's, then, where I've had a lot of freedom and yeah. because of the amount of work that I've put in, they've you know, from a marketing media point of view, we've allowed me to have a bit of freedom and play. And mm. like, there's some really special stuff from that weekend yeah, that I'm very definitely, proud of. Definitely. And and that's it's part of the journey. It's just knowing that, you know, the, my my good friend Deli, who um, is a just a legend when it comes to sports photography, he often refers to sausage factory photos. <laughs> so he's like, he's like, sometimes your your work and it will be ace and it'll be the most amazing thing ever ever and then sometimes it's just taking photos of a sausage factory and it's not exciting it's not great it's not creatively yeah. challenging but it's part of the journey it's part of the process yeah. and you just have to understand that yeah. not everything's going to be incredible all the time yeah but it's all part of the process and like i don't want to i don't really want to i mean it's not shitting on him but like tommy zafir is one of your other friends like he's an amazing he is. sports photographer he is he's ace when leeds came around a few weeks back um leeds um world triathlon you were both shooting it. Mm -hmm. And usually when, when Ben and Tommy shoot together, I look at both of the work afterwards on the World Triathlon page and I'm like blown away by Tommy's stuff. And then I look at Ben's and just think, yeah, yeah, that's a bit shit. No, I'm just, but you know, I always look at Tommy's stuff yeah. and it's always the highest level. And yeah. then when Leeds came around, you were just at such a peak mm. of this of the netball yeah. season and creativity yeah. that you went to Leeds and you nailed it. That every single photo I saw from your Leeds stuff was insane that when I then saw Tommy's stuff I was like Tommy was on Tommy had an off day yeah he and I said to you he, he told me at that night I said to you Tommy's stuff is nowhere near as good as yours for this weekend which is rare because mm. usually it's it's bang on this bang same. on or better yeah and you said to me straight away it's funny that you say that because he came to me last night and said I didn't do well yesterday yeah, he's and he was very aware yeah, of that wasn't. of that like but, that he didn't kill but, it but it goes on back to what you said a minute ago it's like I've been basically working every single weekend three or four days a week consistently mm. shooting sports and consistently trying to like mix it up and do different things for yeah. for weeks Yeah. whereas Tommy's had a very sporadic start to the year because of COVID yeah. and restrictions and race cancellations and all that kind of stuff and yeah. you know sometimes the, the venue doesn't suit you sometimes yeah. the location yeah. doesn't suit you um, and but it's not to say that Tommy's work was bad no, no, no. because it was still world triathlon level yeah. like it was still and, Tommy's affair and sometimes, like one of the best photographers and sometimes in the world. you've got to look at it and go and chalk it up to it like yeah I wasn't great today yeah. and I wasn't great today for and these reasons yeah. A, Y, you know A, B, C, D, E rather than well I wasn't great today so I'm obviously shit yeah. it's not that no, it's not. like yeah. maybe you just you maybe you were tired maybe you mm -hmm. haven't shot enough so you weren't in the groove maybe you struggled to get in the groove because the weather wasn't great like I had one rugby game mid-season where it was just lashing it down with rain and my autofocus was really struggling um, in the rain Come and it was just <laughs> and it was just I think it was like like moisture in the button or something yeah. which meant it just wasn't picking, wasn't picking up it really frustrated me for I've the first half before. and like I just walked away from that game thinking like I just haven't quite nailed that yeah. but then you've you've got to step step back and from a 
when when you're feeling a little bit better, you need to look at it objectively and go, well, actually, that's the re- those are the reasons yeah. that that wasn't yeah. great. Rather than you're a shit individual, you're mm. not very good at what you do creatively. Yeah. Move on to something else. Go and get a desk job. It's look at it creative. <laughs> look look at it objectively and go, well, I wasn't great for these reasons. You know, I was struggling in the weather, or the conditions weren't quite as I hoped they would be, yeah. and I I didn't quite do deal, deal with that very well. So I need to do better next time. Like that ability to look objectively at stuff really helps your mental yeah. health. And I appreciate that not everyone can do that in the in like at the moment because sometimes when you're having a bad moment or you're having a bad afternoon or you're having a bad weekend or whatever it might be, it's really hard to step back and look objectively. Yeah. yeah. And if you can't do that, like give it some time yeah. and then step back and look at it and go, well, actually, yeah, those are the probably the reasons. Yeah. yeah. Um, time time is the best thing. You, yeah. Like take your time. Yeah, yeah. That's t- why I'm not turn try- back to a shoot yeah, in yeah. a few weeks or That's a month. why I'm not trying to kill myself right now looking mm. back at the netball stuff and mm. questioning whether I got it right or not because I, at the moment it's all just too fresh. Like I'm too tired. Yeah. I'm, I can't look at it objectively yeah. enough. And there's there was a lot of games. But I would also I would also 105, say 105 games. Can I mention that? I haven't have I mentioned how many games I did? 105 was it? 105. Wow. Yeah. 105 not out. But also this thing with Tommy and and you at Leeds it's like this is why World Triathlon hires a, you know, yes. a, a multitude yeah, yeah. of photographers because they know that there's going to be burnout. They know that there's not going to be like they're not going to nail it. But also, like, look, let's look at you and Tom. If 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 anyone listening to this now, go to Tommy Zafiris, go to Ben Snap stuff on He's Instagram. A beautiful man. Like, look at the comparisons <laughs> because you do ve- like Tommy's underwater yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. could never do, no, and, and like this is no offense, but yeah. you could never go to a, a pool now yeah. and do Tommy's level of underwater no. stuff right now no, yeah. because Tommy Tommy just knows that stuff, but, and and this is why. It, if you are getting in your head about things like this, like Ben said, look at what look at the things that have caused you to not have a good shoot, yeah. and then stop comparing to others. Compare it to your previous. Compare yeah. it to what you know. You like can play, do. playing to your strengths is a big thing. Yeah. That, that's why like Tommy's strength is in the water. Like, yeah, it's just good. But like what you also have to appreciate, and I'm conscious of time, so I won't waffle yeah. for too long. But like I'm not building for an Olympic Games this year. Exactly. Like I've yeah. had. Probably for the like for the as the year goes, I've probably done like the biggest piece of work I'll do this year, which yeah. is Super League netball. And I've I've got some very cool stuff coming up. Don't get me wrong, but like I think netball has been my big thing this year. Yeah. But Tommy's going to the Olympic Games. Yeah. So yeah. Tommy doesn't need to peak at Leeds. No. In the beginning of exactly. June. Yeah. In not a great venue. Um, Rubbish weather. The the weather wasn't brilliant. Like it was very murky and overcast under the trees where some of the raceway was. Very hard to photograph and make it look great. Um, but Tommy needs to peak in July and August yeah, exactly. at, at the games, yeah. and uh, like ultimately that matters mm. more than whether he nailed it in, and in I'm, July. I'm, I guarantee that if he oh. was here now, he would say, "I don't care about Leeds because I'm like I'm glad I got yeah, that yeah. bad spell out yeah, the way." Yeah, absolutely. Because then, because whenever you have a bad spell, you'll always bounce back yeah. after that. But if you can look at it subjectively and you can understand the reasons you had a bad spell, absolutely. you will always bounce back better. Yeah. And stronger, and this this is the thing. It's and it goes back to that periodization and cyclical nature of life. Like you can't be immense every single weekend when you go out and shoot, or mm. every single day when you go out and shoot. But what are those key points in the year where you want to peak? Yeah, you know, treat it like being an athlete. Like, yeah. Where do you want to peak in your season? Yeah. Like I, I know if I've peaked now for Super League netball for the first half of the year, and I don't peak again, like I'm okay with that. Yeah. But yeah. next year, I know I want to peak in the summer for Commonwealth yeah, Games. Commonwealth. Like yeah. I know that that's where I'm aiming to get my best stuff out that season. Yeah. So that's where it matters. And it's the same, I always talk about Formula One, but let's bring it back to Formula One. Uh, Formula One drivers always say that at the beginning of the season, they're not training for no. a Monaco or a Silverstone. They're training for Singapore because yeah. it's the highest altitude. It's the yeah. highest heat and the highest humidity. And it's, it's a very good. demanding track. And that's like 12, 13 races yeah. in. So they're not training in, in, you know, in January for a race that they're doing in March. They're training for a race they're doing yeah. in August, September, yeah. because that's going to be the and, hardest race. And Lewis Hamilton, yes, he's wanting to get race wins early in the season. Yeah. But he isn't looking at, and I have to win race one of the season because yeah. that's my key race. Yeah. His race is three or four races from the end of the yeah. season when he when he's wrapping that season win up. And and this season is is especially like th- that that's amplified more than ever because. We just went through a load of street circuits where Red Bull battered yeah, Mercedes, yeah. but yet Mercedes know that we're going to come round to Absolutely. some circuit like Silverstone that yeah. in, in two weeks' time. 
Mercedes are going to be very strong uh, at Silverstone. Absolutely. And it's 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 understanding your strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. And and once you understand that, that really helps your mental health because yeah. there's less ex- you don't put expectations on yourself to do well in a situation that you're probably not going to do great in yeah. because you know it's part of a much bigger process. Yeah. I want to just quickly throw in there that anyone that is suffering with any kind of mental health issues or you're struggling with just kind of general um inspiration on your own work or like you you're you're looking at your work and thinking it's rubbish just speak to people like the number one thing me and ben do is we talk to each other more than anyone else i talk to you about creativity about that more than i do my partner or my my dad or anything like that because ben goes through very very similar things that i go through and and vice versa and um just being able to talk and like if i've had a bad day or a bad week or a bad shoot and same for ben just being able to say, look, here's the stuff I did. It wasn't great, um, but, you know, kind of we'll help each other to see the positives yeah. and see the negatives from each shoot because we know that that's what each other wants. So just try and find people in your life that you yeah, can talk like to. Yeah, photo friends and stuff makes a big difference. But, yeah. like, even if you can't, there's loads of hotlines and, yeah. you know... Well, this is what I wanted to do. So we Calm's have... very good. Calm Zone. Yeah. Um, I... The Calm Zone, I think, on Twitter. I was just looking them up. Yeah, yeah. The Calm Zone on Twitter. Like, they deal with, like, suicide prevention and stuff. But, like, yeah. they're very good for mental health. And they will support you through an awful lot of stuff. There is also apps like... Um, what's the... Uh, the mindfulness app. So if you just oh, go onto yeah, the app yeah. store and search mindfulness. Yeah, so there's um, Headspace. <laughs> Headspace. Headspace is it. the common one. Yeah. But what I use for my mindfulness practice which i do every day is uh, an app called serenity which mm. is very good yeah so there are plenty of apps and things out there if, if you do very quick google search for mindfulness or wellness or uh, he- mental health or anything like that there is something in the uk called mentalhealth.org.uk it's a website um it's a foundation where you can get help tips and I, i'm pretty sure they have hotlines and things like that um so if you are struggling with anything just l- find the avenues um, to help you get back to where you are Good work. Um, or where you want to be. Because at the end of the day, if, if no one spoke about it, if, if Ben didn't tell me that he was feeling rubbish because he had a bad shoot, then he would he would end up just in the worst place. Whereas any time we talk things through, we always end up feeling a lot better yeah, yeah. the day or two after. Yeah. Um, and, and sometimes having a talk with somebody isn't about fixing it in the moment mm, yeah. you can still walk away from that talk feeling absolute shit Rubbish, yeah. but it's the fact that you've talked about it sometimes will unlock you a couple of days later I, and I think that's the crucial thing as well there is no fix to mental health like you can't just phone a hotline or speak to a friend and within 10 minutes oh. you, you're smiling and you've got yeah. rainbows over your head like any time I've been at a low point it's taken two three maybe even a week yeah. like it's taken a few days to break out of that but it's like I've said to you today like I, I feel burnt out from Super League season mm. I'm, it's probably going to be most of the month yeah yeah, like, yeah. I, I'm yeah, fully you aware you said that earlier you said fully it's probably going to be pretty, three or four weeks yeah, until yeah. you're feeling back to normal August I yeah. plan to feel back to normal yeah because and, I, I just I'm appreciative that it's probably going to take that long yeah and there's nothing wrong with feeling rubbish mm. for a while uh, there really isn't so We've covered a lot during this podcast. Um, yeah, we have. Thank you for sticking with us. Do you want to do yeah, whose recommendation? Well, I'm just, I was going to just keep that as our do recommendation. recommendation. Yeah, do it. Like, so the rec- my recommendation is the mentalhealth.org. Wait, well, mentalhealth.org.uk. Um, if you're listening from any other countries, just search mental health into, into your local Google, and they'll um, there will be websites to help you out. But just websites um, or apps that can help you with mindfulness or mental health or anything like that Mm -hmm. if you want to talk to me and ben about anything in this podcast you can drop us a message on instagram i'm at david duffin photography and ben is at ben snap stuff um we'll try and get back to you as soon as we can be appreciative that we do get a lot of dms and things like that so if we don't we're very important uh, yeah (laughs) if we don't see it or we take a while to reply uh, it's just because you know busy times and things like that but um yeah that's all we've got time it's for. It's all we've got time for. So I need to drive home. Yeah, you do. Leave Manchester. <laughs> Leave the smog behind me. Actually, no, it's not too it's smog. Not, it's cleared up a little Yeah, bit. it's pretty cool. It's not yeah, too bad. Cool. But yeah, thank you so much for, for listening. Um, we hope that you've enjoyed this. We will hopefully be recording again Very next soon. week for you. So we'll have keep your ears podcast. out for that. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Keep your ears out. Because you listen, you don't watch, do you? Oh, yeah. That's true. So, I mean, you just... Keep your ears open. Yeah. Listen out, but I don't know. Ears open. Right, that's it. Thank you so much. 
enjoy your week um take photos <laughs>